Yeah. How, do, how do you not have a third mic? I have a I have like a bass drum microphone. <laughs> All I need is one mic. One mic. <laughs> but then you felt like this the whole time. <laughs> you should have brought a guitar. I would have expressed myself through that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I could have I could have brought a guitar. I could have so ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold this at like jerk off length right here, right here, right here, so so we can hear Alex you know, we're, and myself. We're gonna you're gonna get through all of this. You're gonna go home to edit this, and nobody you're not like we're not gonna be able to hear anything, and this is gonna be complete shit. Oh, you know we'll hear each other, but Juan's gonna be louder than all of us because he's he's holding the microphone like way up here. Uh, yeah. Just just hold the microphone here. Yeah, then we can get a good all nice. Right. We can get a good nice little like thing. See, and Alex and I will just we'll just we'll just share this. We'll just talk into it. Don't bump yeah. into my head. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Atomic Pop featuring Fat Man and Little Boy. I'm Stephen Corka. Oh, I'm on Frotch. And we have a we have a chair right here in the middle. It's a special chair because we have a special guest in the house today. It's Wonski's little brother, Alex Frotch, is in the house. Come on, Alex, come come join us. Come go. What do you got going on? <laughs> what do you, what, wow. Disaster. Wow. I told you to tell me what, when you were doing this. What, we, we, I mean, we started. You started too soon. What do you mean you started too soon? Where did you get those? Oh, oh my God. Oh, no, oh, the, the oh, store. Oh, oh, wait, wait. You're going to come here. Come here. You're the, the other one's going to burn out. It's oh, my. Burn out. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh, God. There's like paper everywhere, oh, guys. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Oh, this is our New Year's special. Oh, it's our New Year's special. Happy twenty. Oh my God. It's eighteen. You might. Oh Goodbye no. Goodbye the twenty seventeen. Look, look on on cardboard. This is such a great idea in a bookstore at there. Yeah. 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 Oh, see, one's out. Wow. This is wow. One for each of us. This feels like Hanukkah. Oh yeah. Jesus. You're not gonna. Oh, that one's that, out. That's already. not how that works, dude. Yeah. So um. Yeah. That's not how that works. So that's not, that that's not how that works. This was such a bad idea. Wow! wow. I thought it, it was a fantastic it's idea. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I was all beautiful? for it at first. That's oh, gorgeous. Yeah. So um. Doing something special. It it, it it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. You gotta wait, 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 ask we, for we, the we mic. Have, we have to wait for the other one too. All right. Wow, that one that one didn't even go. All the way. That's like that's like one of those fireworks that that you get that like the Roman candles and the, it's supposed to shoot ten and only six no. go and then you're like should I keep going or not? No. And then your parents are like, no, put water on it. Put water on it. So, anyways, we this is Alex, everyone, the guy that we keep talking about. He's yeah. in town for the holidays, and um, he lives in Washington, D.C. Alex, just 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 tell everyone about yourself for a little bit. Here, take my mic. I'm Juan's brother. That's it? That's all you have to say? That's it. You're a musician? I dabble. He's, he's actually, a musician. He's, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. He was in a band called Mr. Moon. Yeah, yeah. He's also in a band called Groove Pocket. Yeah. He's also in a band called Higher Ground for a little bit, too. Yeah. 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 He was also in the Air Force band, Tops in Blue. The Tops in Blue. Yeah. Oh, he's military. Traveled yeah. the world. He's a military he's a veteran. vet. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's an Air Force veteran. Yeah. You know? Uh, he's a very obviously healthy. Like a very, He's the most healthy person here. He's way more healthy than both of us. Uh, yeah. Especially yeah. me. I'm his brother. Like, you know, this is ridiculous. Uh, look at us. Uh, uh, it's like Jekyll and Yeah. Hyde. It's very, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're the older brother, right? Yeah, I'm the older brother. So what was life growing up in the Farage house with the two of you guys? Here, I'm just going to... I, I mean, it was pretty normal. Like, it was normal, man. Like, you know what we used to do, which was a lot of fun, is we would play magic cards... Uh, like till late at night, and I always remember those being really. really we did fun. a lot of video games. A lot of video games. We, we were into gaming. role playing games. Final Fantasy was huge in our household. We lived on a military base. We did most of our life. We did in a different countries. Chrono Trigger was good. The Chrono Trigger was a good game. Um, Dragon Warrior on Nintendo. I remember no. that one. Um, what other games? Kirby. Kirby. We were pl I was playing Kirby when, when our pastor died. Oh, you know, I don't know what we played for a long time. What was mm -hmm. that one game on the Super Nintendo with the unicycles? 
Uniracers. Uniracers. That, that was, was great. fun. That was yeah. a good one. Yeah, so. You remember that one? It was good, right? Yeah, that was fun. I, I never played it, but <laughs> we it played Doc, we played Doctor Mario. That one was Doctor Mario was huge, yeah, huge, huge, huge. Tetris, of course. Yeah, we grew up in the military bases and we moved around a lot. My dad, we were, our father was Air Force. It, it was a pretty normal upbringing, man. Like I don't know what to tell so, you. So Wonski, you know, Alex here is a musician. Your father's a musician. What happened, dude? Oh, I was I was born intelligent. <laughs> like I can do math and stuff, so. But <laughs> all right, whatever. Anyways, anyways. So listen, the reason why we're I use my powers for fraud. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, yeah, clearly, right. clearly. <laughs> all right, kids. So here we're here to do the 2017 year in review. Now, here are the guidelines for it. We are a show that focuses on pulp culture, so it's not just, even though we're in a comic book store, it's not just comic books, it's not just toys and video games. We talk about music, we talk about movies as a whole, we talk about celebrities. We're like E! Entertainment meets Marvel Comics meets like the Kardashians meets like uh, Billboard Magazine meets like Entertainment Weekly meets like... Yes, we're just like the brokest version of each culture. of those. So, so we're going to say things like, you know, what was the biggest or craziest thing of the year? Obviously... Tons of political stuff is crazy this year, but we're not going to talk about that. No politics. This isn't a political show. Plus, Alex here works for the government. I do. He, he does. He does. And the stuff that's going on is enough to give you a heart attack if you talk too much he about it. He works for so. a top secret agency. He's a top secret agent. He can't even discuss his job. You know You know, True Lies with Arnold Schwarzenegger? That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. He's like the world's boringest that, that's, archer. That's why, that's why he looks the way he looks, because he... he He's he's a I, badass. I, I look the way I look because I give a fuck. <laughs> That's why. You're, you're a badass, dude. You're a badass. I'm, I'm not. Bad. I, I'm not. You know how Schwarzenegger like just like takes out like 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 five bad guys in like ten seconds. That's this guy. Right he's here. he's actually like Archer that really loves his wife though. Uh, what's that have to? Oh, because Archer. Yeah. Archer doesn't love the wife. No, but you actually do love your wife. Oh, but Archer would cheat on his wife. Oh, this makes no sense. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you can think like what was that? what it source say it was probably like the Omega or something in True Lies. What was it? Oh, I don't remember. It's been a while since you I've seen what? True that, Lies. That that was one of the last like uh, Schwarzenegger movies that I like. I really enjoyed. Cause what does he? What did he do post True Lies? Terminator Three. I but I mean, really, not much. You you, you think you you think? End of days. Well, he became governor. That's true. Governor, yeah. That's true. But that was like the end of the Schwarzenegger yeah, yeah. era. Was yeah. He hard. he hasn't really starred in a lot of movies since then. Terminator Genesis. He's done a bunch of stuff though. He he came. No out no. He's still doing stuff. He was in Expendables. Expendables. Yeah. Yeah, but that was like cameos. I don't think he's really held uh, he, like. He's done lead roles since then. Well, didn't, <laughs> didn't he play like a cop? He, or something? He's straight. He's a governor. Like that's insane. He became a governor. Huh? Yeah. Anything, so. Hey, <laughs> Trump is our president. Anything. Yeah, no, that's anything's crazy. Possible. Yeah. Come All on. Right. Come on. Anyway, so best of 2017. We have a quite a long list here, so let's get right into it. We don't want to, we don't fuck around here. All right, so the the, the first the first topic I have here <laughs> was best video game of 2017. Sure. Now, to be fair here. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that Alex does not play video games no, at all. No. Uh, I'm also going to say that I really haven't played any games this year at all either. And Wonski over here on the far left, uh, your far right, is actually the guy that has invested a ton of time into video games. Is that a fair statement, Juan? Yeah, I've played a lot of video games. Uh, so just to, just to be fun here, Alex, what's the best video game of 2017? I have no idea. Real life. Have you played any video games? Have you done any gaming whatsoever? One. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold on. There you go. There's something on your phone, right? I do. Yeah. There's yeah. like free stuff. Uh, Lego Junior. Oh my God! Because of his son. <laughs> Lego Junior for your phone. Is it a free game? Uh, I think I had to pay for it. Uh, there's DB Numbers, Think Trolls Two, and, and which Space is, Explorer. What's the best one of the year? Kai, he really loves the uh, the Lego. Ju He's really into Legos what right now. What Alex like? What was your favorite game? I I, I don't I haven't played. You it. don't play those? You know what? You know what was? You know what was good? Um, <laughs> He's gonna talk about some game from like 1994. You no no. You know what was good? There's there's this one um, 
Here, here, let me let me find it and then all right, well, why, why Alex is uh, doing that, I'm going to say my video game of the year, which is Injustice 2. Um, I don't know who the, who, who the maker is of it, but uh, I thoroughly enjoy this game. I enjoy the Mortal Kombat series. This, I think the same guys that make Mortal Kombat make Injustice. Is that true? I'm not sure, but it looks the same. All right, so um, to be fair, a lot of the 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 better game, or not the better games, but a lot of games they release at the end of the year. I uh, haven't touched uh, Assassin's Creed. I don't have a Switch. I haven't touched Zelda, which a lot of people are saying is the best game and of the I year. Heard the Mario game is amazing too, right? Mario Odyssey. Um, so I haven't done a lot. Um, I do play a lot, and this is my only indie choice. I do play a lot of indies, and so my favorite game this year was the Sexy Brutal, which is an indie that came out for. It was I played on Xbox. Sexy Brutal is really cool. Um, you're basically in a casino, and there's a bunch of murders in the casino, and you basically have 24 hours to figure out how to save someone that'll give you powers to move on to the next person, and then it's like Groundhog Day. The day restarts, so you have to explore and find out how this person got murdered and how you can make it so the murder doesn't happen with you being directly involved. Right, and you have 24 hours to complete it. You can rewind time. You can move forward, and uh, and it's a it's a great little story. Um, really interesting mechanic. Never seen it before. It takes about 15 hours to complete um, without a guide. So that was my game of the year. I, I can't find it. The one the that came out was a sequel. Was, You're not good at video games, anyways. Yeah, let's just move on because I'm not. You gonna remember N plus? You know they came out with N plus plus. No. N plus was that one that ninja that you had to stick to the walls and jump over the things that blew you up. You remember that that little stick figure and you threw my fucking. Controller? Oh yeah, I hate that yeah, game. Fucking asshole. That was not. That was not for me, man. Yeah, threw my controller. <laughs> All right. Stressful. Why would you want to play a game like that? So, uh, again, I didn't want to do Andy. I had a, a hard time with this one. And uh, my final decision is uh, Kendrick Lamar DNA. That's a good one. Um, I actually prefer, I know that Humble is the one that's gotten more attention. That's the hit. That's the hit. Um, I absolutely love DNA way more than Humble. I like uh, the end of Switch. Um, is amazing, and I, you know, I'm glad Kendrick Lamar is getting recognition this year. Um, his other record, the, his weakest record, by the way, but um, his most mainstream, I guess. So good for Kendrick Lamar. DNA best song this year. All right. Well, listen. For those who know me, I am pop to the max i am popcorn okay i am billboard uh, hot 100 for life uh if i know anything that's not on the billboard 100 i must give credit to this motherfucker right here because uh, he's the one that sends me youtube links to shit i've never heard before nine times out of ten i'm like oh my god this blows my mind like he just introduced me to new retro wave that youtube channel which that was is, good which is that's it's, good it's all like modern music that came out but it sounds like it's new wave 80s goodness it's it's just it, oh, this one's it, this it, is it, tough, it, man. There was it, a lot of good amazing. music. It's amazing. So, um, it, it, again, if so, again, if you guys know me, number one, I'm popcorn to the max. Number two, I am a working musician, so I do this for a living. I play pop music, top forty for a living. So for me, it, it it goes a bunch of ways. Like there are songs I love to play, but I hate listening to, and there are songs I love to listen to, but I hate to play. Um, so as far as like, the, so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go twofold right now. If if as far as songs like I like to play, like when I play it, I jam the fuck out. I'm like, this is this is like an amazing song for the year of 2017. I'm gonna go with "Sorry Not Sorry" by Demi Lovato. That song jams the fuck out to play. I don't like to listen to it, but playing it, it jams. It's got a nice gospel progression to it, and when the band kicks in, it's just it's just it's balls to the walls goodness. But to listen to the song that makes me like jam out the most, and I just think it's good. Like I either have to jam out or I like have to like emotionally feel it and want to be like, oh my god. Uh. Uh, but uh, for this year, it's a song that I just jammed out to. Every time it's on, my toes tap in, and I'm just like, this shit is good. And it's uh, Starboy by The Weeknd featuring Daft Punk. Um, that's the one? That's did that even one. come out this year? I don't that, even, that that came not, out, it came out this year. In 2017. 2017, yeah. 
The, the Starboy album came out this year. The, the other single off of that was "I Feel It Coming," which oh was my okay God. too. Um, listen, I was I I, I, Jesus. I, I, I I it wasn't a great year for music. I mean, Maroon. What? It wasn't a great year for music. Maroon, it was an amazing no, year for music. Maroon Five really had some strong songs, singles as well. Oh but my but God. I just I just I couldn't I couldn't. I couldn't. How? I, I couldn't. I, I can't believe. I couldn't get into it. So, Starboy, Starboy, uh, by the weekend featuring Daft Punk is is in my opinion a song. Of the year. I almost went with "That's What I Like" by Bruno Mars, um, but uh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm going with Starboy. So for all you guys that are like fuck pop music, you all can suck my dick because guess what? The masses like it and it's not going anywhere. So go fuck off. So one song that I really like was Sampha. Uh, the artist is named Sampha, and the song is called "No One Knows Me Like the Piano." That one was really good. So is that your song of the year? Um, we don't do like like like. Well, there was. You got to commit. Just pick one. Well, I know it's tough. But just because there's so many genres. So I know you got to pick one. Like I, what, I love the new. I, so what's one song I, you, you take? You want to know what's better than uh than uh than the uh the Daft Punk uh what you the Starboy. Starboy is uh, uh, any number of songs from the new Nerd album. Don't do it. Uh, Lemon. You like that Nerd album? Yes. Oh my yes, man. God. It is it's the, good. It is the worst Nerd album to date. The worst Nerd album to date. The the new Ambient Jazz Ensemble the, album. The there's the a worst song. Worst Nerd album to date. Uh, Ag Agfa like Color it. is pretty God. good. It's good. Voila, on the new Nerd album. It's good. Dude, shut up. They, you know what they they they. they, they Nerd Pineapple Skies by Miguel. That's a that's way Dude, better. Nerd was way, Nerd was way good. better than Starboy. Nerd Boy. was good because you want to know what it was the Neptunes and but they were doing like different stuff than what they were doing with their artists. They weren't doing like Hot in Here. They weren't doing like you know the Jay Z shit. Uh, you know like with Nerd, it was like their own thing. It was like it was like R and B punk rock. You know all in one and and but this new Nerd album, it's like DJ Khaled's album or like Will I Am's album. They just got a bunch of like, I, famous artists. I, I disagree. And, and, and they're like Pharrell and Chad Hugo. They're just like let's just go and and make a pop top forty album so we can make money instead of doing what nerd really is, which is more like indie pop. You know, this you're just not listening, not man. You're I'm, just not it, listening. listening. It's not, it's not you're good. not. You're not. It's, it's not good. good. It's, it's not a good. solid. It's a solid album. It's better than their last album. No way, dude. Yes, yes, no it way. is. No way. Oh my no, god. That last time, that was that was the one that said, "What I need, what I need, is that go? Yeah, what yes, need, what yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Party people. Yeah, that was a good song. But I mean, you're, they're they're all great albums. Uh, this this one included. It's it, 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 you'll see. And in like a year, you'll be like, Alex, you know, you know what I've been listening to that's actually pretty good is the last nerd album. I'll be like, yeah, I told you that when it came out. It's on it's on video. It's not good. Um, it's very reminiscent of um, it's, it's, like old, like old school Blue Eyed Soul type stuff, you know, I, like I, uh, Bobby Caldwell, that sort of thing. I know. It's it's just it's it, John Mayer's stuff is so stripped down though, and I it's guess, great though. I guess it's good, but because it, it's real, but it's just it's it wasn't. I don't know, man. It's All right, so a, recap. Great song, like, this is I can't believe we're talking about John Mayer, like you guys. Like I leave for one second. <laughs> the, the, not wrong with John Mayer. The album, so, John Mayer's yeah. great, and the album the album came out this year, so fuck off, okay? So, uh, best TV series. I'm gonna start this one. Um, and I'm going with The Handmaid's Tale. Oh no. <laughs> the Handmaid's Tale, which was on Hulu exclusive, and. Let me tell you what, this show was fucking awesome. First of all, if you don't know what The Handmaid's Tale is, basically it's a dystopian future. It actually takes place right like right now. It was a book. Um, it's based off of, of a book. But basically, um, there's a coup in the U.S. government, and the outcome of is like the government that is now in place is like hardcore Jesus religious. But there's a reason for the coup. Right, there's like a, a type of world war that happens. No, no, there's not a type of world war. Uh, uh, um, Radiation, um, like... Bir births are on the decline. People aren't getting pregnant. They're but it's not, out of radiation. I don't know why why it is, but whatever it is, the, the women can't get pregnant. Um, it's, like, it's like a plague on the human race where women cannot get pregnant, and only a select few women can. So what happens is... is uh, this this religious group stages a terrorist attack and basically blows up all of Congress and the U.S. government and all this stuff like that. 
and but they blame it on like outside things so what they do is they 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 rally the americans together and they take over the united states and in doing so they strip the rights of all the women and they go back to like you know the pilgrim era where basically the, the women's purpose is to reproduce cook clean and do that stuff and they have no say in anything and the reason it's called the handmaid's tale is because uh an old testament story um, the handmaid Hannah was given up to give birth because Sarah, the wife of Abraham, couldn't. And so he impregnated the hand, he would take the handmaiden. And so the women that can reproduce serve as handmaiden. They're given to the more powerful people in society as basically a breeding machine um, who, like... The guy will come in when it's her time of month, where she when she's most fertile, and fuck her on the bed while his wife like holds her. Yes, uh, even though so like uh like in um no you can go ahead dude you were gonna say it's that? insane no I was gonna say so like same same scenario as as uh uh, uh Mad Max. Only a few women can have children. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So. But but and and in this one, the handmaids are literally prisoners. If they if they're caught reading, they get their hands chopped off. If if uh if they're caught uh, talking bad or blasphemous, they they, they lose an eye. Uh, they, they they it's 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 really fucked up. And uh, season one is done. Uh, and uh, they're get they're filming season two. And kudos to Hulu Hulu for doing a really great show. That's that 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 show had me wanting to watch the next episode. Next episode, I will say I came this close to saying this is us, because that's a great show also. But I didn't. I went my Handmaid's Tale. I'll say uh, Last Man on Earth. I've been wanting to watch. Is that good? It's La Last Man on Earth is is phenomenal. It's like it's it's a comedy series. Uh, it's the last comedy. It's I haven't seen. I like it's a lot. It's and it's on network TV too. On top of everything mm -hmm. else, so it's it's I I think it's the only like super duper smart, funny, uh, comedy series that's that. Blackish is pretty good, although. Um, Pick one. I'm gonna say Last Man on Earth. I'm just saying, you know, for. Uh, uh, I'm imagining it's about the Last Man on Earth. So yeah, Will Forte plays this guy who, uh, apparently, um, is uh, is the Last Man on Earth. But Does he happen to have a pet monkey? In the in the show? No, he doesn't. Just curious. I don't think so. No. <laughs> but, like what the fuck? Like obviously that's where I'm gonna great, go. But it's great because they it's the the reason is great is because it balances comedy with the. Uh, with like the complete utter desperation of being alone and like the last human being on earth and they bring in characters and stuff and slowly there's more than just him you know spoiler alert um but the way that they handle uh you know kind of what you would think would happen um if you were the last person on earth uh, but they they throw a, like a great comedic spin on it. The people who made that show were actually are the people who are behind the Lego movies and stuff. Uh, oh, what, nice. What are the name of those brothers? Yeah, the one they got kicked off the Han Solo movie. Yeah. Yeah, but whoever they are, yeah. they're behind it, so it's 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 awesome. Quality. I went with a brand new show, um, so you guys could easily catch up on it. It's on Netflix. It's called Mine Hunters. Oh, um, me that the other day. Easily my new favorite show. It's basically it's a period drama. It takes there there is no villain. It takes place in the seventies and it's it's about the FBI when they started developing how uh, a program to help local um, local police departments hunt down serial killers. At that time, they didn't know what a serial killer was. They didn't know how to profile serial killers. And it's about the founding of that within the FBI. It's basically two guys, uh, two FBI agents, and the police pushback they got um the pushback they got in america basically um talking about how serial killer you're not just born like evil or good like just because you murder 20 people doesn't automatically make you evil that there's factors that that lead someone to do that and that's how they start creating profiles um and it's fantastic they they mimic a lot of um they they, they do a lot of uh, interviews with uh serial killers like real serial killers but don't you and it's it's fantastic don't you fundamentally disagree with that like the fact that no one's born good or bad that people are just born and then because of their environment oh, I, I believe that we're all born 
that we're all born evil and I believe that it's just different levels of evil and I believe that your environment could cause you to do more evil things like I am an evil person I will not kill 20 co-eds in the University of Florida and eat their genitals uh, that's is that happened in that show? No, but it, it, uh, uh, um, that um, because there's a serial killer that eats genitals. That's disgusting. Right. So like you know like I'm not gonna go that far. This guy in the show like he kills his mother and cuts off her head and then like gives a head fillet like. Make, wait, it's, it's really good. It's really good. Did like, you say head fillet? No, 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 <laughs> no. He like you know. Hey, what he fucks the head. All right. Well, let's go with the uh, biggest letdown of the year. Alex, uh, you can start. Uh, Pop culture. Easy. Chromio. Oh. That's all you're going to say? Their, 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 their first single is just not good. And I was so looking forward to it. It was one of the things I was most excited to this year. And then that first single came out. And it's just not... Like, shame on Chromio. Right? Yeah. My biggest disappointment was uh, Taylor Swift's new album. Um, for those of you, for those of you that don't know, we're all in agreement here. I, I understand, like um, it was a big piece of shit. I'm, I'm, I'm a type I of. Mean, it's ho no, it's horrible. It's horrible. Not bad. It was well produced. I it, it was, it's but the, it's, it sounds it, sonically. It's it's great. It better be. It's Taylor Swift, but it every song is shit. I um. For those of that you don't know, um, so much, man. I, it happens. But anyway, fuck Why it. Shut the fuck up. So Goddamn. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can I'm a, show this to my kids. Yes, you can. Kid. Well, the, the, Kai doesn't know the word fuck. No, he does not. Why no. are you sheltering him from reality? He'll get to it on his own. He'll I'm get not, to I'm it. I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm not gonna put him in front of in front of a video where you know, saying all kinds of curse words. Okay. So, anyways, uh, back to <sighs> the depriving him of quality entertainment. <laughs> Not just this show, like this is not quality. great, great, great movies. This is not great quality. movies. I mean, we don't even have Wait. three microphones. Great, great movie, dude. <laughs> quality entertainment. Our new year, the new year special was sparklers out of a box. That was yeah. your idea, and that's and the fact that you that was that I had to come with something. That's what makes that fantastic, though. Because so, because it's so like indie right there. So you know? so listen, guys. I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan. I'm not. I think I've, she sucks. I've dead. always loved Taylor Swift, and this album was just. Is, I'm I'm very sad. It's but you know I didn't even think back. about Chromio, but I, I I might actually have. I to mean maybe she'll Chromio. bounce back. I mean listen, let's be real about something. Katy Perry, who's just as big as Taylor Swift, arguably you know. What a huge downfall teenage, this year. Teenage Dream was like her, there's no her, her her biggest album had the most singles. Uh, she matched Michael Jackson, and she's just been on a downslope since Teenage Dream. This could be the start of Taylor Swift's downslope, and I hope it is because I think she's overrated. There's there's nothing wrong with you know. Taylor Swift and Katy Perry and all them like not you know getting out or on the decline. Yeah, but Katy sure Perry's com people. Katy Perry's completely gone like loopy. It's really weird. No, no, Katy P Katy Perry is is gone, but but Taylor Swift's album is garbage. The fact that it sold as much as it, it broke records, it really did. And her, uh, new album? her new album, it really did. It, like it sold like three million copies. Like what did you did weeks. you hear about the theory about what I think happened, Alex? Huh. With with uh, Taylor Swift. What's that? She was replaced by a lizard. Oh my god! You live in Washington D.C. Let me tell Is you, do not take Kai to eat pizza. That's all I'm gonna say. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I don't even know what to say. She's a lizard. Okay? Yeah. It happened, and all like right. I was telling Steve, Avril Lavigne, she was replaced in 2008 by Lizard 2. The real Avril Lavigne was sacrificed, and we have a fake Avril Lavigne. Aliens? Yeah. How about those? How about those the, the aliens? song? You know how about those real life aliens? Hold on. No, coming. but look, I, you're being joking. Right? I'm being serious here, <laughs> Alex. Listen, no. this is important. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna entertain this. Remember when she gets a phone call the, like the real Taylor Swift is like dead and like stuff? Because when the Illuminati does something, they have to announce it to the to the people. It's like this weird thing. So they were announcing, look, Taylor Swift's dead. We're replacing her, and you're still going to fall for it. Probably why the album wasn't that good. So the reason... Hold on. Let's recap. The reason Taylor Swift's album is not as good... It's because she's not a human being now. Because she, because if she were a human being, she would still be making good music. But the <laughs> Listen, fact that she's take a look at Chromio. Chromio. Isn't Chromio like a band that's basically like a Palestinian and a Jew working together? <laughs> 
I have probably no, lizards I have too, no man. Idea what's yeah, going on with probably them. lizards too. Go ahead, Steve. Oh my god. We all know Juan is has huge conspiracy theories regarding the Illuminati, and and, and apparently Taylor Swift is a lizard. You're but just, you're but, just, he's just saying that to to get under my skin. But, That's but, what he's doing. But but listen, in all honesty, like uh, Taylor Swift's album was garbage. That's a great biggest letdown. I like that. And Chromio, that song did suck for Chromio. It did. Chromio is a great band. If you guys don't know Chromio, it's spelled C H R O M E O. You That's should definitely awesome. check out the band, but avoid their. Their current thing, which is yeah. what, what is it called? The orange juice or something like that? Juice, or? juice, just juice. They got the juice. So, anyways, my biggest letdown of the year was Marvel's Legacy. Um, it, uh, <laughs> He's like, I haven't read Alex this. Is like, I don't know. I don't know about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck around on my phone for the next fucking <laughs> five minutes. Basically, this is Marvel's chance to redeem themselves from the Marvel Now, which was a huge disaster, and their answer to it was these lenticular covers that were throwbacks to famous Marvel comic covers that moved into uh, new versions of those covers. Uh, the quality of the cover was horrible, first of all, which is why we have so many of them still. Nobody wants to buy them. They're just not good. They don't look as good as what DC did. Second of all, the stories were, really weren't that great. Marvel did not reinvent anything new. They gave us a great issue number one of Marvel Legacy. It was amazing. It was fantastic. And we haven't heard anything or seen anything from it since. Now, since you did read it, and I haven't read it yet, I have it on my stack uh, my stack to read, was the Marvel 2-in-1 any good? Marvel 2-in-1 was great. But did it tie into it at all? Because A the, the Marvel 2-in-1, if I'm not mistaken, is Thing and uh, it's thing Johnny and Storm. Torch. And, and, they, and, and they talk about the... It's basically a Fantastic Four book. Okay. It's basically... Okay. If you like Fantastic Four and you want to subscribe to Does Fantastic it connect Four, at all with Legacy? Yes, it does. Just because, okay, cool. Just because they talk about that. And they have said that they're going to talk about Wolverine and the gem that he has in the tail end of certain Marvel Legacy books. They've touted that in, in the Marvel books that are out. So okay. they're like, hey, make sure you get these books if you want to find out what happened to Wolverine. You know? I, I, I don't think that Marvel Legacy was that big of a disappointment because the issue itself, I thought, was unbelievable. The issue itself was great, but I think... I mean, hold on. Like, we no. got to remember, that issue, even the, the, the Avengers, I thought the Avengers, when I first heard about the Avengers 10 million BC, I was like, this is going to be the stupidest fucking thing great. I have... It they are. I am looking forward to that book. It was great, amazing. Was great. But 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 the Marvel Legacy launch as a whole, yeah as a whole it was Marvel, terrible. From yeah, Marvel okay. Comics to relaunch their books and to get yeah. people excited about Marvel Comics again was the biggest letdown for me because they just did not do a good yeah. job. Basically, they just kept doing what they have been doing and rebranded it. That's sure. it. Sure. You know that, that 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 that's all they did. Instead of it being Marvel now, now it's called Marvel Legacy. But it's still the same old shit. Now, granted, there's still some great books. Old Man Logan's great. Weapon X is great. Amazing Spider-Man is great. Yeah. The X-Men series are surprisingly good. They killed the fuck out of Jean Grey. Yeah. Nasty style. And I read Phoenix Resurrection, which came out yesterday, and it's okay. We'll see where. I it heard goes. they're taking Dan Slott off of uh, Spider-Man finally. Really? Yeah. I think that's a bad idea because no. Spider-Man is consistently great. No. Consistently amazing. Ha, ha, ha. Anyways, uh, but Marvel's Legacy, where's issue two? Where is Avengers BC? You know, what is going on with that? Nobody fucking knows. Shame on you guys over at Marvel. You know, your movies are great, but your comics are suffering, and we see it every day in the customer's demand for the books. No. It's just not there. DC is wiping the floor with you guys. Yeah. Um, so please stick, p pick it up because we do enjoy it. Now, kudos to the Star Wars books. Those are pretty good for Marvel. Yeah. Darth Vader's great. The Star Wars title is great. great. Uh, so there are some good things out of Marvel, but yeah. there's more shit than good, unfortunately. Speaking of Marvel, it's Stanley's birthday. Happy it is Stanley. Stanley. He's like ninety-five. He's old. He's old as fuck. Man. He's very old. Yeah. So uh, kudos, kudos to uh, uh, not not a kudos. Shame on you, Marvel. Uh, that's my biggest letdown. Best call. movie. Go. This is not only my best movie oh, of God, the I year, know what you're say. Just take this but day. probably oh, the best movie of the last decade: Blade Runner twenty forty nine. I haven't seen that one. Don't waste your time. It's three hours of fucking <laughs> snooze. Okay? So, the original Blade Runner was probably one of my favorite science fiction movies ever made. It was, It's what created basically the whole like cyberpunk genre. Um, it was Harrison Ford. Harrison one. Ford as his best. Boring. 
it's, it's, it's one right. of the the best sci-fi writers of all time. Um, a lot of people were saying when this movie came out that it was as good. And I, I didn't believe it, and when I went to the theater, I was completely blown away and believe that I have right. seen the best sci-fi right. yeah, movie You and my brother should get together ever. and jerk each other off, okay? Because so. you both fucking feel the same way. And if you want to hear more about why Juan loves it, just watch our Blade Runner 2049 review and our past videos yes. of Atomic Pop. Uh, I knew you were going to say that. You In the last 10 years, that's just a bold statement. The best yeah. movie of the last 10 years. Easily. First of all, Blade Runner 2049 is just under three hours of fucking boringness. I will say this. It's visually beautiful. Sound, sound is amazing as well. But who gives a fuck? It is. But there's, so there's, there's a lot of good things about. Me. There's a lot of great philosophical, philosophical, so boring, philosophical so concepts. I, I, that I like about it. That, well, you're gonna love, really Bla Bla but that's what Blade Runner is all about, that's Alex. Super interesting because that's that's coming. That, and, and, and you know, stuff like with Blade that's Runner, common, the man. whole question they have this program that's programmed to like love him, but in the end, does a program actually love him? And there's you got to watch this. Man. You don't you don't know. Listen, how, you don't know how we're gonna bring we you back to that reality, man. Oh, yeah. Is it I robots know. taking over? Hey, Alex, we know because he's part of that secret agency that does some really fucked up shit. So he knows all about where we are in technology. So when he says how close we are to singularity, listen to this. Elon Musk. Right is, uh, Elon, yeah. e Elon Musk. I'm, I'm none of those things, first of all. This is just me saying like... Just that's, a, that's a cover. That's a cover. Yeah. That's e a cover. He says, <laughs> he says he's an economist, okay? Listen to me right now. Arnold Schwarzenegger was a salesman, okay? All right. But in... in this it, is look, 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 look. Look at these! Look at these fucking arms, dude. Yeah. You don't fucking do that. To be, you don't to, know why? That's because I don't watch movies. I don't recall. Well, nothing against no, that. Instead, you're I've fighting. Got, yeah, instead, other, you, instead, you're. No fighting one world in the crime. Department, Department of Labor you're looks like you. World crime. Yeah. You're not supposed to say what department he works for. Fuck, Juan. Oh, this cover. I don't want to blow this, it. There, there's, there's no, there's no cover. But I'm. This is not. This is just by the stuff that's out there. Did you see like the videos from? Um, from uh, what's that company that that does all the robots and stuff? Skynet. Uh, no, not Sky. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's the company that's out there that does the uh, that does like the uh, the crazy robots. The the Whaling Corporation. Jesus Christ. That's from Blade Runner. I know it's from no, that's Blade. from Ro 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 that's from uh, Aliens. Aliens. Sorry. Which is the one from Blade Runner? OCP. Uh, that's from RoboCop. Well, isn't there this whole like theory now that Blade Runners and Aliens happens in the same like universe? That'd be cool. That'd be yeah. cool. But anyways, the whole AI stuff is is for real, and it's and it's oh, Boston Dynamics. That's a company. You see the Boston Dynamics video? They have like a, a a robot that you know that looks like a human that's jumping from like one box to the other. Have you seen that shit? No, I have seen it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, imagine them doing that like a million times faster, completely silent and in the dark. Yeah, dude. And that's only that's only that's within the next decade. That, oh, I mean, listen, listen. I, I, I totally think the Matrix and the Terminator is a possibility. Think about it. And it's if, gonna, if it's robots, if robots become self-aware and they're like, okay, well, we need to just fix the planet. How do we fix the planet? Uh, well, we need to. Get robots don't even need to be self-aware. It's gonna get crazy so soon. Here, take for example, like you said, Elon Musk and the Teslas and the driving cars. Imagine for a second that uh, this driving car thing uh, kicks off like for real, and which is very plausible because they're already driverless cars. Think about, first of all, the economic disruptions. What's going to happen to everybody who makes cars, everybody who services cars? How many gas stations do you go by that you see? What's going to happen to insurance companies who, like, the majority of their money comes from car insurance rates when, car, when nobody's getting into car accidents anymore? What's going to happen to car dealerships that sells cars? Because if, you're, if, if you can just, if you can have a driverless car, you can just order one like an Uber. It'll pick you up and take, why would you even need to have a, your own car? Or if you do have your own car you can just keep it and rent it out to other people so that's all going to go downhill hold on there's more what about all these other businesses to stop you. because it's nuts it's it's cr why are there no black people in star wars finn dude what well because finn is a lead all this elon musk stuff and then i started thinking about the jetsons and then i'm like holy fuck the, the jetsons like wiped out black all black people and then i was like you know where there's no black people in star wars Oh, I don't think it's gonna go. The, I'm. The, I don't. Shut up. I haven't. I like, fucking shut up. That's that's, that, that's, that's a ridiculous. you. You just true. You just true. The thinnest line from from what I said to what you said. Like like literally. Like it's like it's like it's like this. It's like this, dude. Yeah, you've known me all. That's how my mind works. But that's what I'm saying. What I'm it's saying. True, though, like, but right. what I'm saying is completely impossible, and it's gonna 100% happen. 
Oh my God! So yes, Juan's best movie of 2017 was Blade Runner 2049. Alex, do you have a best movie yet? Or are you still contemplating? He's, so, he's I, thinking I, about the rise of the robot. I am. I got sidetracked, and now I'm thinking. <laughs> Is that why you're so physically fit? I'm fucked. Uh, yeah, because I want to be able to run away. Listen, guys, <laughs> we don't want Skynet. We want Wally for my sake. Like I need that fucking fat wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, my best movie of 2017 was Logan. Uh, that's that's fair. Logan was amazing. Uh, you should watch Logan. Oh, you want? All right. Uh, I, 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 can I, I got can it. Can I give my best? Go, 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 go. Logan was amazing. It was so great to see Wolverine say fuck. It was so great to see him put his claws on someone, and when they come out, there's blood on them. It was so great to see Professor X say fuck. I never thought I'd see that. Um and uh, it, it just, it, it really brought a sense of reality to the character of Wolverine for the live cinematic thing. The character of X-23 was played wonderfully by that little girl. I don't know what her name is. And I'm sorry to her right now for not giving her the credit she deserves. Uh, but it was awesome. The the Bone Breakers or whatever they were called, the, the cyborg motherfucker dudes were great. The whole movie was great. Um, Even the little things they had, like the, the X-Men comics, like... Yeah, the little oh, Logan ex- looking through the X Men comics. Yeah, that was good. That was really cool, man. Yeah, the, the Logan was just a really well done superhero movie and just movie overall. And it it is, if I have to pick a movie uh, this year that came out that I could watch multiple times and not be bored of, it would be Logan. I haven't seen it, but yeah, I've heard a lot of good things. Yeah, it's very good. Alex, you're up. So the last one that I saw that I really, really, really enjoyed this year, I got to say, was a Disaster Artist. That was really good. Oh, you saw it? I, and it was I'm excellent. So excited! How it, was it? It's excellent, man. Oh my god! It's okay. excellent. Like not only not only is is a. Uh, is is uh the Franco brothers like yeah. not only the characters that they play are great but like the other characters that they have it's like the Pineapple like Express Seth, right? Seth Rogen yeah. and all them like they add like they just it's just it's great it's awesome. Do you have to now for people that don't know about the disaster artists like if you watch the you, if you, you watch have, should you watch the room you don't have to but if you watch the room beforehand it'll be a million times funnier and 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 better. And you should probably watch a doc. You should probably see how this guy acts in real life because from what I've seen in the previews, so Franco, like, nails him. Yeah. Like, nails him. uh, Just Uh, just look up... uh, He... he, uh, (laughs) Uh, uh, James Franco and um and and the guy I forget his name uh, Tommy Wizu they actually went together on on Conan or something like that and just watch those two interact and stuff and you can get a sense of of uh you know the, the, of the room, dynamic by the way the guys is widely considered the worst movie ever made you you want you know I don't know what's great <laughs> the guy directed produced it wrote it starred in it like and he thought he was like god's gift to all those roles here's the thing like the movie itself is like a, it's supposed to be like the super inspirational movie but that the, what what really what really makes it great the really what really makes it great what well, makes it kind of like a mind fuck is the fact that like you watch and and and, and it's like this motivational like <laughs> aspirational thing until like a second later then you realize like Oh, you're. This is a complete delusion. This guy is freaking crazy. Yeah. Like it's 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 like. And he's a bad writer, Steve. There's like nonsensical stuff. Like imagine you're watching Logan, and all of a sudden it cuts to a baseball game with a father and his son, and the son drops the ice cream, and the son stops starts crying, <laughs> and the father's like, "I love your mother." There's, then it goes back to Logan. There's like, one. Like, there, <laughs> there's one. There was a, there's one scene in the room which they replicated in in uh, the Disaster Artist where Tommy Wiseau's character. Uh, 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 what where uh, James uh, the other Franco brother he's selling the story about how somebody got cancer to Tommy Wizu's character and Tommy Wizu is supposed to react to that and he reacts to the news by laughing he goes ha 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 ha, ha. that's funny Mark like something like that and then and then everybody on set like they keep cutting and being like um are you sure you want to laugh like like he's telling you that she has cancer and so then he's like yeah this is like real life like it's crazy man yeah. Uh, what are we looking forward to in 2018, Wonski? Um, I'm basically, um, believe it or not, what I think is the most interesting thing going on in media right now in pop culture is is finally like we're actually seeing what the internet affecting everything, right? Like um, what's going to happen between cable and streaming services? Mm-hmm. We have the the Fox and when this Fox deal comes through, I, I yes, that's huge. But what are you looking forward to? Huh? 
What are you looking forward to? Like the the ramifications of all this it's is going to be. It's going to be on the desk. It's on the desk. It's on the desk. On the desk. I think it's, it's going to be funny to watch. Sorry, guys. Uh, Avengers. There you go. Avengers. Avengers: Infinity War. Avengers: Infinity Out of War. Everything this year coming up. That's what you're looking forward to the most. Avengers: Infinity War. Sure. Okay. I, well, I had my actual answer, but you didn't like it, so I just well, this they, is the best they, I can do on the spot. That I mean, yes. You were you were you were you were being you were Nostradamus in the year. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so fine, Avengers. Alex, what are you looking forward to in twenty eighteen? Uh, uh, Justine, I'll be there in a minute. Right there. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ! I don't know, man. What are you, what are you looking forward to? to? Is there a movie that's coming out that you're looking forward to? A TV show? I'm looking. My kids going to kindergarten. How about album? Is there an album coming out? Hopefully the Chromio album. Hopefully the single is. Is. But but wait. I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the Chromio. Chromio takes forever to come out with music, don't they? No, no, they 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 they've come out with it. But I'm I'm the new album should be coming out next year, and I'm I'm looking forward to that. I mean. Single's usually a representation of the best shit, though, right? I hope not. That's why I, <laughs> I'm hoping it's... Hopefully it's good. Yeah, Chromeo's good. Again, check it out. C-H-R-O-M-E-O. Chromeo. Uh, I'm going to Demi Lovato concert this year. Are you really? Yeah. I think she's coming in March. Wow. Yeah, I'm taking my daughter. That's pretty cool. Yeah, my daughter wants to go see uh, Demi Lovato, and I'm, sorry, s- I'm sorry. secretly a fan, so... All right. I would never admit to it to, to them. Oh, well, we yeah. won't. T- we won't no. tell them. Uh, I once again, I'm, I'm gonna have to agree with you. I'm kind of. I'm looking forward to. Um, to Avengers. To Avengers. Have you seen the trailer? Uh, yeah. It's it looks, pretty. It looks pretty. It's pretty intense. The thing intense. that's really great about it is the guys that did Captain America Two, Winter Soldier, mm-hmm. and Civil War. Yeah. Have done. This one and those two movies are genius. Yeah. So. It should be pretty good. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. Scratch that. Now that I thought about it, Twilight Zone. Is it coming back? Yeah. I was gonna you know who's gonna be? America? You know who's gonna be directing the Twilight Zone? Hmm. Jordan Peele. Yeah, that'll be good. <laughs> what, what network is that on? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Is I don't remember. That'll be good. I don't remember. They're trying. They're in negotiations to get him to. He said, "Get out." To for best for film or for anything. Um. I heard Get Out. I don't even know what that is. What is it? No, Get Out's fantastic. It's a great movie. It's fantastic. Um, I, I couldn't say because I honestly haven't seen it. My, my no, it's, it's great. It's, it's fantastic. Right. You should watch it. I, I should. It's fucking fantastic. Uh, I want to get to it. Um, because I don't think it's underrated and I don't think it's overrated. Yeah. Like, and as the best movie, it's just honestly like 2049 is just my my joint, so. It's fine, dude. Like, so, again, yeah. you and my brother can go jerk each other off of that one. Um, have you seen how big Skyler is? We should have your brother on here now. Dude, he's like six he's foot four. Four. A- Alex, is he? he's like seven feet tall, oh dude. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. That guy is huge. And he's like stick thin. He's yeah, really you. thin. You know? He has your a, brother the thinnest he's ever yeah, been? Yeah. Look at his face. No, my brother's pretty thin. I've never seen his face that thin. I you know, and you know what's awesome? You can see your veins. I don't think I've seen my vein in fucking like 20 years. <laughs> No, that's not something to be proud of. My I'm not. I'm not proud. I'm not proud of it. I'm just saying, like it's cool. You can see all your veins and stuff. That's yeah. He's really strong. <laughs> he is. He can kick both of our asses at the same time. He really time. could. Uh, uh, and hold his kid in his one hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he has a Captain America tattoo and a, a fucking bald, bald eagle. eagle. Bald Holy eagle. shit! It's Diesel, yeah, right there. Diesel. You want to show everyone? Nope. Why, dude? Because <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you you don't know all the stories we've told about you? Oh, we talk about you all the time. Oh, jeez. We, we talked about incidents, so what it's incidents? funny, huh? Or was on the other thing? We know, what incidents? Oh, never mind. We'll talk about it later. I don't think we talk about incidents. No. No. He is a secret agent, though. <laughs> he is. He absolutely is. So if you see him, if actually Elon Musk is an avatar, being controlled by my brother. I wish, man. Elon Musk is. That's the you want to know what I look forward to seeing what Elon Musk does in 2018. He's so he's been saying some crazy shit though. And and that's and call me. Who, who's call the, me who's the, who's the, who's the guy right now that's like terrified of AI? Elon Musk. It's him that he's the one that's saying that they're gonna kill us all. He's the one. Yeah. He's kind of in that boat, but yeah, he's the <laughs> one that's saying we need to control it before it controls us. <laughs> this is great. All right, guys, I gotta go because we're in yeah, pines. We, we all have to go. Yep. 2017 was a pretty big year. Uh, happy New Year to everyone. I'll be there in one second. We're finishing uh, up. Uh, and and uh, 
Oh, a very happy 2018, everyone. And uh, we're here at the Pembroke Pines store, if you guys didn't notice today. So you can check us on Pines Boulevard, just East University Drive, across from Perry Airport. Or we have a store in Miami on 107th and 8th Street, across from FIU. That's Corker Comics. Make sure you follow us, like, subscribe, share on YouTube.com forward slash Corker Comics. Or just search Corker Comics. Uh, big shout out to our special guest, uh, my brother from another mother, uh, uh, Juan's real brother, Alex, right here, the secret agent. Uh, Alex, pleasure. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. And and uh, and uh, for he was gonna. You know what I used to tell him when he was a kid? What was that? You know that he was actually gonna be a twin, but he ate his brother. <laughs> Boom. Uh, that doesn't make any uh-huh. sense. For Tom Fox, we treat you, fat man, little boy. I'm Stephen Corka. On oh, one. Later, guys. It's. <laughs> Uh, My dick or his dick?